So she ran to the door and called out prudence, piety, and charity, who, after a little more discourse with him, had him into the family. And many of them, meeting him at the threshold of the house, said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. This house was built by the Lord of the hill on purpose to entertain such pilgrims as you. Then he bowed his head and followed them into the house. So when he was come in and sat down, they gave him something to drink and consented together that until supper was ready, some of them, namely piety, prudence, and charity, should engage him in edifying conversation. Come, good Christian, since we have been so loving to you to receive you into our house this night, let us talk with you of all things that have happened to you in your pilgrimage. Yes, to help us to wisely improve the time while we await dinner. With a very good will, and I am glad that you are so well disposed. Do be seated. Thank you. Do tell, what moved you at first to betake yourself to a pilgrim's life? I was driven out of my native country by the firm conviction that destruction did await me if I abode in that place where I was. But there be many roads marked as leading to Zion. How came you to be in the only right one? God sent a man unto me, whose name is Evangelist, and he did direct me to the wicked gate, where I was set in the way that hath led me directly to this house. And did you come by the house of the interpreter? Oh, yes and did see such things there, the remembrance of which will stick by me as long as I live. What manner of things? Three things especially, to wit, how Christ, in spite of Satan's work to put out our hope of salvation, yet maintains his work of grace in the heart. And yet that, secretly. Yes, he be hid behind the wall, so as to be seen only by the eye of faith. What else sticketh in thy mind? How the man in the iron cage had sinned himself quite out of the hopes of God's mercy. Ah, a sad case, his. His condition came by a persistent refusal to repent. And did you hear the sleeper recount his dream? Yes, his plight was one of the things that stand out in my mind. Do you know of the man? Oh, yes. He hath been intending to repent of his sin since my grandfather was a small child. Indeed. Then Interpreter was right. About what? About how soon doth never come, but recedes on before us like a mirage in the desert. Tis a sad story, his. Aye, especially that he suffered all because of one small sin unforsaken. A tiny one, he called it. Twas not tiny at all. He said it was. If it were so tiny, then why would he not trade it for all the riches of eternity? I don't know. I'd never thought of that. But a little thought will show that it was not a tiny sin at all, but instead greater to him than all the world. I think I understand. T'was a tiny sin for Adam to taste the apple, but in so doing, he did prefer the words of this serpent over the commands of God. From thence have sprung all the evil that doth so heavily despoil the world. Ah. Therefore it is that there are no tiny sins, and that no one clinging to a tiny sin shall be made glorious and immortal at the trump of God. Now I understand more clearly why he suffered so. He was choosing sin over Christ. Indeed. Was that all you saw at the house of the interpreter? Oh, no. There was much more. With that, he recounted all that had befallen him from the start of his way unto the meeting of the two great lions in the way. And truly, if it had not been for the good man whom you have to your father, telling me about the chains on the lions, I do not know but that I might have gone back. Many have. But do tell me, why are the lions placed where they can so terribly frighten earnest pilgrims? They are there as a test of faith, namely to wit, whether or no the pilgrims will believe the word of God's messengers 
over the evidence of their senses. Truly, it seems a great test. Yes, but only failed by those who call God a liar. He that believeth the word of God cometh through straight on, as thou hast done, although others do have it easier than thou didst. In what way? In that they pass through in the light of day and can see with their eyes the chains we speak of. And so for me the test was made the greater, because I had slept in the way and lost my role. Yes. To fail one test is to make more difficult the next. Thanks be to God that I am here, and I thank you for receiving of me. Tomorrow morning you must go take a closer look at the lions. To what purpose? That thou mayest see that they have neither teeth nor claws. Indeed. Tis verily true. Then are they like the warriors at the drawbridge, who hoped never to win a battle. Yes. When we learn to see through the eyes of faith, it is soon seen that trials and temptations be mere paper dragons put in our path by Satan to frighten us away. Which thing I only hope I can remember.